Okay, nobody's seen this on video ever before. This is the uh, Tim Vanderelli ferrocell, and instead of having the magnet underneath the ferrocell, between the two pieces of glass, and this is the first video anybody's ever seen of the magnet on top of both pieces of glass. Um, you notice we have an extremely deep holographic effect, and notice very closely we have clockwise and counterclockwise uh, divergent and convergent centripetal and centrifugal on the bottom face of this magnet. Now you'll notice the shift as I move the magnetic divergence spatially across the glass. Obviously if I move it anywhere it's spatial movement. What is obviously happening here is that you're not necessarily seeing so much as the magnetic field, which of course you are in the ferrocell, but what you're actually seeing is the dielectric z-axis radial component of light since this ferrocell cell is ringed by uh, white light LEDs very bright and they're shooting inwards into the sandwich glass with one micron thin of a uh, special ferrofluid solution on top we have a three-quarter inch neodymium iron boron and uh, I wish you could actually see the depth of field better. It's really hard. There we go. Um, you'll notice right now I have a uh, blue shift on the uh, centripetal convergent right here. We have red on the divergent right in the inner hypertrochoid pattern you also notice if I let the magnet sit for a second, it will be a bubble form, a holographic bubble projection of light, a holographic bubble of light. Even though the uh, ferrofluid is only about a micron thin, you'll actually see it form. But you'll notice that this pole is uh, blue shifted and the opposite pole on the centripetal convergent is red shifted. It's kind of hard to see since you're looking at overlapping centrifugal and centripetal convergent and divergent. But the tighter hypertrochoid pattern at the center is what I'm pointing to. Um, I made a huge discovery the uh, past couple of days. I've uh, finally figured out not only how, but why and why it's necessitated. The final peel of the onion as to why there is a phase shift between North and South Pole. After 30-40 years of research, biological experiments by Rawls Davis uh, showing that there is a growth retardation on seeds, animals, um, hatching chickens, retardation on the North Pole, and as I have repeatedly done over and over and over again, I have found retardation on uh, growth um, on the North Pole and uh, increased on the South Pole. I don't want to give all the details right now. It's both complex, but it's divine and it is literally the final onion peel, the final layer of the onion as to why there is a phase shift. For lack of a better analogy, let's just refer to it as like a Doppler shift in, uh, in the magnetic polarity. Why? is the North Pole stunt growth and why right now I have the magnet rolling on the glass along the dielectric inertial plane. You'll notice right here in the center we have the white light and you'll notice here I have a blue shift on this pole which means it's the south pole of this magnet and over here although you can't see the color difference that much it's hard to actually stop a rolling magnet on a piece of very slick glass I have a red shift, excuse me, over on the right side and I have a blue shift on the left side. So I have South Pole over here and North Pole over here and right along the center. Let me see if I can get you a better depth of field. So you can actually see, you really can't see this unless you, have to, unless you actually have the ferro cell in your hand. Just incredible depth of field since you're only looking at one micron thin of ferro fluid. You've, you're literally looking at, if you actually had this in your hand, you're looking at uh, almost three to four inches of actual depth. Now, if you'll notice right in the center how we have an absence of light and we have 
bright white light right in the center. This is the dielectric inertial plane of the magnet. Um, I've been very busy on the book. The only problem with the book has been is not a lack of material. It's been so much material and uh, research, a lot of it biological and others, and I've made a huge, huge discovery. I, I think it's literally the, the last and final hurrah of understanding why there is a phase shift on one side of the magnet that is inverse to the other pole of the magnet. Why it is there, how it is there, and why it is, must be necessarily there. Why it must necessitatively exist there. Here you can actually see it better. You see the bright white light along the center of the dielectric inertial plane. You actually have, since light is not electromagnetic in nature, it's just like a coaxial cable. Light has a z-axis radial dielectric component, as I mentioned in the book. That's why you see the white light concentrated at the very center of the magnet. Of course, there is no center of any magnet. If I were to take this magnet, as I've told you many times, and cut it a thousand ways top to bottom, each layer will have its own dielectric inertial plane. There is no center. What is forced there, what is concentrated there, is not located there. It doesn't exist there. Um, metaphysical ramifications of that are so far reaching it would literally cover a hundred books um, without exaggeration. You've always read the ancient Platonic text that the light lies at the center of all antinomies and here for the first time in video you can actually see it right along the dielectric inertial plane in the middle of the magnet you have you have light at the center of antinomies one pole and the other pole and I will explain in the fourth edition of the book as you can see here you can see a light a slight red shift on this pole which is the uh, north pole which is why there is enormous decades from Rawls and Davis and my own reproduction of a lot of their experiments, enormous evidence of retardation along the North Pole and uh, accelerated growth and a lot of other biological effects along the blue shift of the South Pole. Like I said, the closest analogy that uh, I could describe to you would be like a Doppler shift of a train approaching you. As you're sitting, if you can imagine the train as a magnet, as one whole entity, just ignore the tracks and as the uh, horn approaches you, you have compression approaching and rarefaction upon leaving you. And I'm sure everybody's heard a car horn or a train approaching you and you have that Yeah, I know that's kind of funny. But uh, I'm trying to give it, give you an analogy that you can understand that's really simple as to what's going on in a magnet. Why is there necess necessitatively a, uh, a uh, pole shift between the North and the South Pole? When decades of biological experiments and my own experiments confirm this. Like I say, here you're seeing the dielectric inertial plane right at the center of the magnet. Remember, the dielectric inertial plane is not located there. It is forced there. It is concentrated there. It is indivisible. It is literally an ancient saying, if ever there was one, the indivisible center. In other words, it's uh, a center that can never be found, yet it is always self-centering. It is a self-centering whole. It is true holism in the absolute, true, and most purest sense of the entire universe. And here we are. The first video you'll ever see. Um... I believe, anyway, of the ferro cell on top of the magnet, and you can see the divergent and convergent. So you can actually see the arms spiraling either clockwise or counterclockwise. Convergent, divergence. Um, I've had so much stuff, and there's not going to be a lot of pictures in the fourth edition of the book on covering the missing secrets of magnetism, thank God. It's mostly going to be text, but your understanding and the understanding of how a magnet works, why it works, is uh, going to reach the final level and uh, humanity has really been so long and uh, trying to understand what magnetism is, why it is, how it is, why it necessarily must be that way and uh, the fourth and um, I know I'm gonna have to produce a fifth edition I've just got an enormous amount of material 
um, you're finally going to understand what magnetism is. Remember the entire visible universe uh, from the atomic scale to the macro scale nothing exists empirically without it being propped up by magnetism. Magnetism literally is force and motion. The opposite of force and motion is inertia and acceleration. A magnet ultimately is nothing more than coherent polarized gravity. Gravity alone is a connotation, a connotative term given to mass as a point of acceleration, but it is dielectric counterspatial acceleration. Gravity itself does not exist as some independent force. Uh, the unification of the four forces, I've got the formula for, I've had it now for 13 years, but the unific unification of the four forces of dielectricity, electricity, magnetism, and gravity, which is just a counterspatial acceleration of mass towards the smallest spatial volume possible, is uh, extremely simplex. It's not complex, and it's a very simple formula, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. But uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up on what I've been doing. I've got so much stuff to add and thankfully I don't have to add a, ton a bunch of pictures um, I kind of felt like the book of becoming a picture book. The third edition um, did not disappoint me so much as the fact that there was just so much material I couldn't even fit in half of what I wanted to into the third edition so anyway here you're looking at the three quarter inch neodymium iron boron on top of the Tim Vanderelli invention of the ferro cell and you can see the convergence and divergence of magnetism and if I put it on its edge you will see the center which drives the magnet the true puppet master behind that which people are fascinated by the, the divergent centrifugal and centripetal magnetism here you have the puppet master and the string at the center of everything which is driving the magnet which is coherent polarized simplex force and motion concentrated coherently right at the center where you see the light concentrated at the center of all things the indivisible center remember there's no pla there's no way you can cut out the center of a magnet you can never separate the north from the south pole it is an indivisible center and uh, I've been talking about it endlessly in the book and I'll unfortunately have to talk about it endlessly more this white streak you see at the center of the magnet that is the dielectric inertial plane it is the point of disappearance of the light which is shining into this ferro cell it's ringed by LEDs and disappearing along the dielectric inertial plane it is also disappearing on either pole you can actually see a ring of light here and a ring of light here you'll also notice there's a red shift here which this must be necessitatively the north pole and a blue shift here that which means this that pole before it turned right there a second ago this must necess yeah, necessitatively be the south pole because of the blue shift I will explain to you in the fourth edition why there is a divergence between north and south pole why is there a for lack of a better term currently a Doppler shift why there is on the north pole why there is rarefaction and why there is on the south pole compression and it will explain 30 40 years of biological experiments of eggs seeds animals hatching chickens by Rawls and Davids and others they knew it could reproduce and they knew what each pole did but they didn't have the answers to why why each pole did what it did why does the north pole cause retardation of growth and other effects and why does the south pole cause acceleration um, you'll find some fascinating answers and for the first time in uh, all history humanity will finally have an understanding the reason the magnet actually turns like that is actually trying to align itself with the Earth's magnetic pole. If you put a magnet on a piece of slick glass like that, it will align. Because we have the one uh, north pole over here. So I'm not turning it or shifting it in my hand. It's just actually shifting to the Earth's magnetic pole. But for the first time, humanity will have a complete understanding of what magnetism is, why it is, why there is a biological effect between North and South Pole. Um, the last layer of the onion will be peeled by me. Um, I'm likely going to have to come out with a fifth edition. I've just got so much stuff. It's better to have too much stuff than not enough stuff. And uh, you really are going to like it. Um, 
Whether humanity believes it or not, that's not my concern. Um, it's logical. Uh, all evidence proves my conclusion. I have the formula already in the third edition. I have another formula to add. And uh, whether I'm proven right, right in my lifetime, I don't care. Um, I finally figured out uh, the last little secrets of what magnetism is, why it is, how it is, why it must necessitatively be the way it is, why there is a discrepancy between North Pole and South Pole, why there are effects due to compression and rarefaction between the uh, North and South Pole. I've already uh, almost completely explained to you the dielectric inertial plane of the magnet in the third edition as well as the second. I'll need to explain it more. Um, I've just uh, been so extremely blissed out as to... I can't really talk about it right now. I want to get it published before I talk about any of the details uh, what I've discovered. I really don't want to give a lot of the details of it until I actually put it out there in the fourth edition because uh, I'm just so happy I discovered it. I finally got it now. This is the last layer. It's been revealed. I know it's a little bit verbose in this video, but uh, the fourth edition is coming. I have an enormous amount to add. You should be really happy with what I've discovered. And uh, this is another edition of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. I'm glad I could show you this little video. And uh, also, I literally have maybe 50 or 60 more of these videos to add, but I've just been so busy. And I kind of had a brain drain. I was killing myself on the first, second, third edition, so I had to take a little break for a month or so. So I had to drain my brain for <laughs> a little while. Um, but I've been working nonstop. So anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, post any questions about any, uh, any questions you might have or uh, any future videos. Thanks.